Huge update from X today as we have Grok 3. And today we're going to be testing out. I just got access to it. It has two new modes, as you can see right here. So Grok 3 introduces two new modes to interact with our most powerful model, Deep Search and Think. So it seems to have some sort of reasoning model embedded inside there as well. And you can switch between these. Now, how similar does this look between ChatGPT and Grok? It's absolutely wild. Like the branding, the colors, and the icons even used on the buttons. Like, for example, if you select deep research here, or you deselect that, it, it is so similar, it's bizarre. But anyway, we're going to go straight into here now, and we're going to be testing out. You also get access to grok.com. So they've just launched a new version of grok, not only inside Twitter, or X as you want to call it, but inside .com. And this is more like a dedicated user interface, and then you can actually share chats directly to Twitter as well. So let's test it out. We're going to just start with something basic right now. I'm going to say, okay, name me some dog breeds that end in I because I want to see, okay, how intelligent is it? Can I actually do things the right way? I was doing a live stream before and it totally failed on that. And you can see it actually fails on it again inside the chat here. So not a good start. So it said, name me dog breeds that end in I and it's come up with Shiba Inu, which does not end in I. Neither of those words end in I. But let's see now if we switch to the new chat and we'll switch to think mode and see if we get a better output. So we're using the logical version of Grok, the reasoning model that can give us better outputs, hopefully if we type in the same prompt and we'll say, okay, name me dog breeds at end and I. Now it's going to think it over. It gives you the timer and it shows you exactly what it's thinking about. If we click on the arrow down there, we can see how it's rolling out. Very similar to DeepSeek actually, when you look at this and the way that it rolls out, all these UIs are beginning to feel very similar. And that seems to be giving us a better output. So, for example, it's actually overcome the challenge that it failed on last time. And it said, therefore, the dogs end with the letter I, R, these, these, and these. And it has passed the test, all right? So the reasoning model, if you want intelligent answers, is far superior to the normal version of Grok 3. Now, bear in mind as well, this is Grok 3 beta. It is not the main version of Grok. One of the other things that... Elon was talking about inside his stream recently was how you can build games. So I'm going to test this out now. I'm going to say, okay, build a snake game combined with Space Invaders, and then we'll switch to Think Mode. I like it much more than the old version, just for its reasoning model, because you're going to get better outputs, it's going to come up with the goods and give you something intelligent. Whereas, for example, Grok previously would give you basic answers, but it wasn't that great. And additionally, what you're going to get from this is that Grok 3 is linked to the latest news updates and information that comes from Twitter or X, right? Now inside X, people are constantly posting new stuff, posting new materials. And so the benefit of using something like X versus using something like ChatGPT is that it's got newer, more recent data. Now the thinking mode does seem to take longer than usual. What we can actually do is we can compare this to ChatGPT. We'll give it exactly the same prompt on. So this is the reasoning model from my one. In fact, I'm going to switch that now because I want to use O3 Mini instead, which is a more recent model, and we'll see how this performs. Let's have a look at some of the benchmarks. So this is a great tweet from Robert Scoble, who's showing, okay, from the live stream, they released some benchmarks in terms of Grok 3 versus Gemini, DeepSeek, Claude, and GPT-40. And you can see for benchmarks in terms of math, science, and coding, Grok is winning by a long way. Now, if you want to compare it in terms of reasoning, right, because Grok 3 is more of a reasoning model as well, then you can compare it against O3 Mini, O1, DeepSeek R1, and Gemini Flash 2 thinking, and you can see that Grok is dominating on those benchmarks. But take them with a pinch of salt because this is never that reliable. Now, we've got the code inside here, as you can see. It also gives us details on how to use and install this. Just to test this out, I'm actually going to say, give me the HTML code for the game instead so we can preview it live online. That is taking quite a while to load, I'll be honest with you, but it seems to have almost finished. So hopefully we get that back soon. One thing I do like about this is just the speed. Look at the speed that it's coding at, right? I've never seen ChatGPT or anything else like that code as quickly as that. So it's pretty wild and it seems to be coding really in depth. So we've got the code ready to go in HTML from Grok. Let's test this out, see what we got back. From Liveweave, there is nothing there. That is not working at all. Let's compare that versus ChatGPT. So inside ChatGPT, we have the HTML as well for the Snake game. And that is actually working, as you can see. So you've got a combination of Space Invaders and Snake directly from the code from ChatGPT. However, inside Grok, this didn't work at all. All it does is it creates like a green block on a white blank space. It's not really nicely designed or anything like that. So not the best start, but let's keep going now. What we're going to say inside both is generate a picture 
of a giraffe riding a magic carpet. And we'll switch off deep thing. I don't mean these deep thing mode for that. And then we'll do the same inside chat GPT. And we've got them side by side. So Grok has come back to us way faster. And look at the quality of those images. That is absolutely awesome. If we have a look at the image from ChatGPT, it's just not as interesting. It doesn't feel as realistic, right? So this is the image from ChatGPT. And over here, we have the images from Grok, and they're just superior by a long way. You, you just can't argue with that, can you? That is a giraffe on a magic carpet, flying around, having a great time. ChatGPT is still winning from what I can see in terms of coding. The code from Grok didn't work at all. I know that Elon said it would take about a week for before you can properly judge Grok free. But from what I've seen, ChatGPT A03 Mini is still superior for coding. For reasoning, Grok is very impressive. Let's test something else out now. So what we're going to do is test it out for content creation. I'm going to take a prompt like this. We'll go inside Grok and we're going to say, OK, create an SEO optimized article for this. And we, can, we don't need deep thing for this. This is pretty simple stuff. We'll say keyword equals SEO training Japan, something like that. In the meantime, we can compare this versus ChatGPT. The speed at which it replied is pretty awesome as well. So we'll go inside ChatGPT. We'll do exactly the same thing. Same prompt. Plug it in. I do like the canvas mode inside ChatGPT. That is awesome. Let's have a look. So if we pull these up side by side and see which one is better for content creation. SEO training Japan, your no nonsense guide to crushing it online, not bad for a headline versus ChatGPT that says SEO training in Japan, master SEO and dominate Google. Uh, honestly, like out of those, I would probably pick this one. However, what you can see here, and this is a common telltale. If you ever see someone sending you a message like this, humans just don't use these large dashes or it's super rare, but you can see that Grok has used that twice within the first paragraph. Now, if we read the introduction, it said SEO training isn't just a buzzword. It's the key to unlocking serious growth for your business. Blah, blah, blah. I'm Julian Goldie. Here's what I've done. I eat, sleep, and breathe this stuff, and I'm here to cut through the noise feed. This actually reads a lot more humanized than this one, right? So, despite the dashes, which I would include in the prompt, I would say just remove the dashes. The actual writing itself feels very humanized. It's nicely written, it's formatted throughout the content as well. It's also included some links that are not hallucinated to our funnels for the content. So, for content creation, that is 10 times better than Grok2, for sure. Let's actually have a look as well, see how long the content itself is. So if we scroll down, we'll see how long we got here. So 722 words, not bad. Let's see what we got back from ChatGPT. ChatGPT gave us 676 words, so pretty much on par. Grok3 just gave us 50 words extra. But I do like the fact that, for example, Inside Twitter, like you can post articles directly. This is actually an article section here. And a lot of these articles, they get really good reviews. Like this got 3,700 views. And you could just generate the content inside Grok. Like you could give it a transcript and say, okay, go off and create the content for this now. And then you can get thousands of views and send people to your funnels using these articles. If you want to see my automation for doing that, then you can actually grab that inside the AI Profit Boardroom. Link in the comments and description. And it's got all my best SAPs and processes for creating and turning video transcripts and creating blogs with AI SEO. So feel free to get that. But we're going to keep rolling through now. And one thing that I'm super excited to test as well is the deep search option. You can basically search a web like ChatGPT's $200 a month option, which is on ChatGPT Pro or Perplexity, which actually gives you five free searches per day. So we can compare the outputs from each of these and see which one gives us the best response. I'm going to test them all in real time. I'm going to start a new thread on each, just to be fair here. So we're going to say now, research Grok3 and the latest updates from it using perplexity deep research. We can do the same inside Grok3 as well. And then inside ChatGPT, we, we will use deep research as well. I am paying for all these tools just to help you and show you exactly how this works step by step and to give you the best comparison between each. Now, Grok3 is coming back to us pretty much straight away, which is absolutely amazing. It's super fast. However, if you actually look here, it's cut off, right? And it seems to be stuck down there. It doesn't seem to be generating anymore, right? But now it's continued resuming. So it's actually generated that research unbelievably quickly. We've got words back there really quickly. Is still doing the research, like you see, it's at reading point. And ChatGP actually asked us to clarify some points. So I'm just going to go with all of them for now. Now, usually with ChatGPT deep research, that's going to be like a 10,000 word report and it will take about 30 minutes. Plus, you only get 100 generations per month to do deep research. If you use deep search inside Grok, I don't know if there's a limit yet. There probably is, but I just don't know what it is. 
And also inside Perplexity, you get, I think it's five free searches a day. And then if you want more, you just go on the premium plan, right? Now, quite often, you're not going to need a 10,000 word dissertation on the research, even if it is super in depth. But with Grok3, this is like a search engine in itself. And it's found a bunch of web pages. This is not just referencing tweets. So it actually has two different sections. You've got posts, which is taken from Grok, like you can see. And then also inside this section, it's got the web pages section. So it's sourcing from the web as well. So it seems to be almost like a, what would I say? I feel like this is almost replacing Google as well as ChatGPT or other search methods. So it's pretty awesome. Let's have a look at what it's saying though inside the responses. So if we have a look here, it's referencing posts. This post was from January the 29th, February the 11th. I can't see any recent posts. So it's not, for example, like referencing the, the live stream I did on Grok3 today. If we keep scrolling down here, like most of these are really outdated posts. If you go inside the web pages section here, that's a live updates feature. So that seems to be more recent. But for example, if we use Perplexity, Perplexity is actually going to resource. Perplexity usually references stuff that's from really recently. So if we have a look here, this was literally from today, right? Like maybe an hour ago or something like that. So Perplexity seems to use more recent data, whereas Grok is still in the beta stages. I don't think it's 100% ready. And additionally, if you look at the depth of the report here, this is 421 words. Whereas if you look at Perplexity and we go through the content here and we compare it, the content from Perplexity is 973 words. So it's a lot more in depth. Plus it's got the sources inside the content. I can't see that inside the deep search option from Grok3. So it doesn't reference the sources inside here. And ChatGPT is still going to take a while, but I know for a fact this will be more in depth, more detailed than anything else out there. However, if we go on here and we look at where is it sourcing the information from? I don't know if it's using like really recent references, right? Doesn't show you the dates. So I would honestly pick out of all of them for speed, but also depth and resources and the quality of data. I'm still going to go with Plexi. I think that's still a better option when it comes to deep research agents. However, Grok is a decent option if you're already subscribed to Grok. Let's actually have a look what Plexi says about the tiers here. So this is referencing the latest data. So for example, this is testingcatalog.com and this was just posted on February the 18th. And you can see that it says Grok3 Mini optimized for low latency interactions, Grok3 Reasoning designed for complex problem solving, and Big Brain Mode activated for advanced queries. This mode layers multiple reasoning engines, achieving state of the art results on PhD level biology and chemistry questions. If we go inside the benchmarking against leaders, it's really feeding in like the latest data. I would say that is a far better research report. And additionally, here you can see in terms of monetization and accessibility. So X Premium. Subscribers for $16 a month gain basic access to Grok3, including 50 deep search queries monthly. So that seems to be the limit right there. Super Grok, which I was talking about earlier, is priced at $30 a month. This tier offers unlimited reasoning queries, priority API access, and early features like voice mode, which is coming on February the 25th. And then you've got the enterprise API, which I think is big potatoes if you want to sign up for that. I think that's a few thousand if I remember correctly. So I think if you really want to get the most out of this, like super Grok is where it's at. Now, if you're using grok.com directly, if we say, for example, tell me about today's news, it's going to search the web live. And it says as of today, February the 17th, here's some key news stories. So that seems to be better for deep research as well. And then what you can do here is you can actually share this to your team. So you can copy the link and share that if we open up a new incognito, as you can see. And then also, if we go to share on X, we can actually share what we've created directly on X using grok.com, right? Now, what's going to be interesting is, will these pages index directly on Google, right? And get traffic. For example, if you create a response about Google, can you share and rank that conversation just like you can with complexity pages? And you can actually see, you can. That was an unexpected query that I just pulled up. But you can see how, for example, this entire conversation actually indexes on Google. So these responses are not just shareable on Twitter or anywhere else, but also you can share these responses and then they actually index inside Google. And this has only been launched today and it's already indexing. There's three pages of content directly indexed on Grok. So I can imagine like a lot of people create content and then grok.com is going to get tons of traffic. Kind of like how Perplexity Pages is just constantly indexing. Like you see there's tons of pages just constantly being ranked on Google directly from Plexi pages. It seems like they're trying to compete with everyone here, right? This is a bold move from Elon because essentially you've got deep search, you've got think mode, you can attach files, you can generate images, you can search the web like Google, 
You can create pages just like you can with Plexi pages. You can feed in the latest data from Twitter. It's pretty wild. And also Super Grok is coming and you've got your own and inside Grok.com, you've got your own UI for using this stuff as well. And you've got some options here. So you can analyze data, brainstorm, create images and code. So if we select code, this is going to be interesting as well. So if we say, for example, help me write a snake game. I'm wondering if it's got like a canvas option inside rock.com and that, yeah, that's better for coding. Look at that. That's 10 times better. So it's got like its own canvas section. We can click on wrap, wrap it up, copy that code. We can say, okay, create a HTML for this game. And it looks just like chat GPT. It feels just the same. The only difference is like the icon here is slightly different, but it doesn't seem like you can run the code directly inside here. So you'd have to run it on liveweave.com or anywhere else to actually get that. But yeah, how similar does that look to chat GPT is pretty wild. So thanks so much for watching. If you want to get all of my best tutorials on using email and content automation, social media, building AI agents, workflows, web automation, and AI SEO automation plus an awesome community of 135 members all interested in AI along with weekly coaching calls with me where you can jump on and ask any questions. If you actually sign up today, then you can jump on the live Q&A call tomorrow. And additionally, we're going to be adding a Grok free course inside here. So if you sign up now, it's on a beta pricing. We're probably going to increase that soon. So feel free to sign up now while you can. Link in the comments description. And if you want to get a free one-to-one -one SEO strategy session, feel free to get that link in the comments description. We'll show you how we take websites from zero to 145,000 business month and generate hundreds of thousands of dollars in sales on autopilot on this free link building acceleration session. You'll get a free SEO domination plan, discover the secrets of SEO link building, or answer any questions you have one to one. You learn the best link building strategy for your website, plus how to quickly outrank you with better digital link building and how to send SEO of traffic based on what's working for us. Feel free to get that link in the comments and description. Appreciate you watching. See you on the next one. Bye.